Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 News Now. I am Stephanie Haney here with your top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app on this Thursday, June 9th. Thank you for being here for the top stories. These are the stories that matter most to you here in Northeast Ohio because these are the stories that you are clicking on, reading and sharing from our site. And we start with our top story on the website today. Pro Football Talks Mike Florio talked with our 3 News Sports Director and Voice of the Browns Jim Donovan about the Deshaun Watson situation. And he is now saying that the NFL should put Watson on leave and believes the suspension will be significant. Now NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell had previously said that he would not put Watson on the exempt list. He said that would not be something that would happen. However, Florio is saying that he thinks it should be put back on the table. He says Florio says that he has asked the league twice whether Goodell's comments from late March still stand, and both times the league has said no comment. Here's a quote from Floria. Florio, you can take that however you want, but how hard would it be to say his comments still stand. Now, in addition to talking about the possibility of putting Watson on the exempt list, he also talked about the possibility of how long Watson could be suspended. Now, he's not been criminally charged as a result of sexual misconduct allegations, but he is still subject to punishment from the NFL, and the investigation is ongoing at this time to see whether he violated the personal conduct policy within the NFL. And a reminder, there are now 24 sexual assault lawsuits against Watson and we learned yesterday that the Houston Texans will be added as defendants on at least 23 of those lawsuits. Those are the lawsuits where the people filing those claims are being represented by attorney Tony Busby. Florio said that he believes that we're looking at a longer suspension, whether it's paid leave or unpaid leave. He went on to say, at the end of the day, the personal conduct policy isn't a justice system. It's a device for ensuring that whatever the NFL does to a player who gets in trouble away from work meshes with expectations in the league. And you can see that full interview between our Jim Donovan and Mike Florio on WKYC.com. So let's talk about why this conversation is changing now. It was late on Tuesday that the New York Times published an article further detailing sexual misconduct allegations against the quarterback Deshaun Watson. It took a deeper dive into the things that were previously known by the public. This was sports writer Jenny Vrentes who published this article. And in it, she said that Watson met with 66 different women for massages between fall of 2019 and spring of 2021. He had previously said that there were roughly 40 women that he had met for massages in his depositions. Now, those definitions, I believe, were covering a shorter period of time, but we are now learning of more interactions. Also, one woman who spoke to the Times on condition of anonymity is not someone who filed a sexual assault lawsuit or who talked to the police and pursued criminal charges. That person talked about Watson allegedly exposing himself to her during a session and she said begging him to give her or to, excuse me, begging her to give him oral sex. And she said she specifically had to say no. And then she asked him this. What is it like being famous? Like, what's going on? You're about to mess up everything. So that woman, according to the Times reporting, trying to give Watson a bit of a warning about what he is accused of having done. Now, the woman told the reporter that she was connected with Watson through Dion Lewis, who was the owner of A New You Spa in Houston. And Watson apparently went to that establishment many times during his time with the Texans, at one point paying Lewis $5,000 for new equipment. And also in the New York Times article are allegations that the Houston Texans enabled Watson's behavior by providing him with space for massages at a hotel called the Houstonian and also providing NDAs for Watson to give women that he got massages from. And it's after these allegations came to light that attorney Tony Busby said that he would be adding the Houston Texans and others as defendants on the 23 lawsuits that his clients have filed for sexual misconduct against Watson. Clearly, this is a developing story, and as always, we will bring you more updates as they become available. Now, the Akron police are talking more about the death of a 17-year-old who was beaten to death outside of the I Promise School. That 17-year-old, Ethan Liming, and it happened 
last Thursday. Akron Chief of Police Stephen Milet says that it's a senseless loss of human life in Akron and that he didn't deserve to lose his life. They mourn for the loss and grieve with the Liming family and everyone that he touched during his 17 years of life. So what we know about what has happened according to authorities is that there were four people playing basketball and Ethan and others came upon that basketball court and it said that they had a splatter ball gun and I looked up what exactly that is. It's a toy and it shoots soft water beads so it kind of looks like a paintball gun but it's not shooting paintballs it's shooting water beads and what is thought to have happened is that two of the people maybe Ethan, maybe not. Two of the people that were in that group with Ethan started discharging that gun at four people who were playing basketball. And then by the end of it, Ethan was beaten to death. And his family talked with officials and they are absolutely stunned and broken. His father talking about how his younger brother, not able to sleep, had really looked up to Ethan. The whole family is at a loss right now, and anyone with any information is asked to come forward to try and piece together what happened. The suspects have not yet been identified. Now let's take a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers in from the Ohio Department of Health. Remember, we get these weekly now each Thursday, and this week the COVID new, new cases are up again from last week. There are 18,247 new COVID-19 cases reported across the state of Ohio in the last week. That's up from last week when we were at 17,530 new cases. Now, a word on the total number of deaths at this time. Beginning this week, there's going to be a pause in the cause of death reporting with the Ohio Department of Health. That's because there's a new coding system being put in place. So we won't have updated COVID-19 death totals here in Ohio until after June 16th. So there will be no COVID death reports attributed to COVID-19 this week or next week. Right now, we do know that there are 549 people being treated for COVID in the hospital. And out of those 549 people, 112 of them are in the ICU. Now let's turn to baseball. It was a big night last night for Jose Ramirez. The Guardians beat the Texas Rangers 4 to nothing on Wednesday night. And Jose Ramirez hit a run-scoring double to tie for Major League RBIs for the lead. He went 2 for 4 with a stolen base, and he got his 54th RBI of the season. So now he's tied with the Mets' Pete Alonso. Shane Bieber pitched neatly into the fifth inning, but there was a long rain delay, and it was his 700th career strikeout. He struck out Mitch Garver in the fourth inning, and he reached that milestone in 93 games. That's the second fewest appearances to reach 700 career strikeouts, just behind Yu Darvish, who did it in 87 games. Now, the Guardians have had seven games so far the season postponed due to weather at Progressive Field, and they will play the Oakland Athletics tonight at home at 7:10. If you are a Raising Canes fan, there's a nickname for you and I kind of love it. It's Caniacs and Caniacs in Northeast Ohio are invited to the grand opening of a new Raising Canes and it's in Mayfield Heights. This is on Friday, tomorrow, June 10th. This will be the 14th Raising Canes in Northeast Ohio and the 48th one in the entire state. So the restaurant will be open Sunday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to midnight and then Friday and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. So a little bit later on Friday and Saturday nights. And their grand opening tomorrow, they're hosting a lucky 20 drawing. So 20 customers, you have to be 13 and or older, will get free Raisin Canes for a year. How's that for the Caniacs out there? Anyone can enter the drawing between 7.30 and 8.30 a.m. tomorrow and winners will be announced at 9 a.m. So you will not have to wait long after the opening to get that. And the first 100 customers at the new location in Mayfield Heights, you'll get a combo meal. Uh, to order a combo meal, you will have to pay for that. You'll get a complimentary Canes t-shirt and a box combo gift certificate. So this new Raising Canes will be at 5880 Mayfield Road. It'll be right by the Starbucks near the Lander Road intersection. And they're also, also hiring. They're hiring managers. So if you're looking for a job, that starts at $15 an hour. And if you're looking to get away, Here's something you'll be interested in knowing. Breeze Airways is adding a new service from Akron Canton Airport to Las Vegas. And I will tell you, flying out of Akron Canton Airport, pretty nice. It's pretty nice. It's very chill. It's small. 
can't get lost. Not a lot of places to roam around at the Akron Cannon Airport. So starting on Thursday, October 6th, they'll have nonstop flights to Las Vegas on Thursdays and Sundays. So if you want to buy a flight by Monday, June 13th, so that's coming up really quick here. If you want to buy a flight over the weekend, you'll get a special rate of $99 for a one-way travel. That's between now and next Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2023. You can, do, you can book that on the Breeze app or at flybreeze.com. And today, we saved the best for last because we got very sweet news in the newsroom yesterday. We want to congratulate our own Sarah Shookman and her family because they have welcomed baby boy Luca Angelo James into the world. He was born at 327 a.m. on Wednesday, and he weighed 8 pounds and 4 ounces. This is Sarah and her husband Angelo's second child. They already have daughter Isla. She was born in 2020. And here is what is wild. They chose not to know the gender of baby Luca before he was born. So before he was born, before Wednesday at 3.27 a.m., they were referring to that sweet little bambino as baby meatball. But now they know it is Luca Angelo James and they couldn't be happier. Sarah tells us that everyone is doing great and that Isla is thrilled to be a big sister and is very happy that Luca is finally here to play. Congratulations to them. Very excited to have the newest member of the Three News family. And that is just one of the stories on this week's It's All Good News show. It's up on our WKYC YouTube page right now. So if you want more reasons to smile, make sure you check that out. All right, that's it for your Three News Now update today for Thursday, June 9th. I will be back with you tomorrow for more 3 News Now.